So, driving to work this morning, my ABS and my Stabilitrag light just came on. So, I guess I'll be troubleshooting that shortly. So, I'm checking the uh, ABS and Stabilitrag codes and uh, the little inexpensive reader that I was using uh, doesn't read anything but OBT, OBD2 uh, codes. So it, it couldn't read anything for the ABS or the uh, traction control system. So I did some quick research and uh, ended up purchasing a relatively inexpensive Chinese made uh, scanner that does uh, OBD and ABS and the SRS, the supplemental restraint, and another couple other modules. I, I haven't really looked into it too much, but what I did is I purchased this device from Launch, and I'll put some information uh, here in the video or down below. And uh, but this one allows me to read other other issues. So I'm going to go ahead and do. A, a diagnose actually I'm already in there it does a automatic detection after a short update and what it's going to do is read the modules and it should come back as it's going through checking all the different modules there you can see there's four fault codes and it comes up with this little report and there's our four problems that it come up with. So left rear wheel speed sensor, right rear wheel speed sensor, left rear wheel speed sensor circuit. So the left is in there twice, right is in there once, and a control module communication bus A off. So not real sure what all that's about, but the, um, the nice thing about it is you can actually click share and email it to to yourself or to you know somebody you're wor working on a vehicle um, so I'm gonna go back so after it uh, completes its diagnosis uh, I'm gonna go into where it says enter here we're gonna enter the module information and we can go to read data stream Let's look for left and right rear. Oh, that's left front, not left rear, because those were my codes. All right. I'm going to set that down. I'm going to leave the video watching this, and we will go for a quick drive. not watching that so after we're done with this drive cycle it, it should hold a graph and we can go back and look at it so in a perfect world they should be the same I'm going to assume that one of them is going to be worse than the other. I think we might have an issue with both because it had two left and one right uh, circuit failures. So we'll just do a quick drive here and I'll stop and take a look at the grabs. Just looks like that left one is bouncing around. It's 
definitely, oh yeah, that thing just dropped to like a zero. I haven't seen any movement on the right one, but as soon as I get stopped here, we'll take a look at the graph. All right, let's select the left graph. Oh yeah, look at that. That left one was dropping out like crazy. Let's take a look at the right one. I don't see any dropouts on that one at all. I would say that I got a problem with that left one. So I'm not real sure about the right one, but I'm going to... Uh, uh, that usually is indicative of that magnetic uh, ring on the wheel hub is probably missing some sections. A General Motors is notorious for that flaking off the back of the, the bearing. You have a perfectly good wheel bearing and hub, but that corrosion flakes off that magnetic strip that reads your wheel speed that messes everything up. So you end up having to buy a, I don't know, $100 hub just because some magnetic strip fell off. It'd be nice if they had a way to just replace that magnetic ring for a couple bucks on a perfectly good bearing, but I'm going to assume that that bearing's got a problem. We're going to have to replace that, so I'm going to go out and take a look at that. So I'm just going to crawl up underneath here. I don't think you even need to jack this thing up. Maybe. view of that bearing or not. Yeah, I really can't see. Yeah, I guess it looks like they've got a dust cover over that rear one, so I can't see the ring. Looks like there's three small bolts that are covering up that uh, back of that hub so looks like the only way we're gonna get a look at it is take that off take that cover off and get a look at them oh, I have to assume that that's their solution to preventing them from corroding but we'll get this thing up in the air and take a look at them so this is the product that I purchased it's the launch I don't know why they call it the Sea Reader or Creeder Professional 129X. Um, I'm fairly impressed with it so far, uh, uh, just after first use. Um, like I said, I think I paid $268 on Amazon, as opposed to you know a $40 or $50 OBD, just a code reader that really doesn't do anything but clear codes and give you some. Uh, minor live data. This uh, seems to be pretty decent. Touch screen, Android operating system. It's got Wi-Fi. You can download updates and if you want to purchase extra things for it, there's a little you know, like a little store that, that has a link in it that you can download more things. I'm not sure what that is yet. But, yeah. First first use, I'm, I'm very happy. Uh, you know, for the price of that and the hub, I'd still spend more at a dealership to have a hub replaced. It'd probably be $500 or better. Um, so if I can get another new tool for the same price as uh, having somebody else do it and do it myself, all the better. Wasn't able to determine if the ring, the magnetic ring on the back of the hub was the issue because there's a block off plate on the back of that. I tried using a uh, uh, a camera scope uh, to try to get a look in there and see if I could see the ring. Couldn't validate that that was the issue. 
Uh, I did end up just purchasing a replacement um, hub and bearing assembly. I think I uh, spent like $60 at Detroit Axle. It's online, uh, free shipping. It actually showed up in, I think like the next day. Of course, I'm in Michigan and it's coming out of Michigan, so that, that'll obviously uh, have something to do with the speed of the delivery. But for $60, it's uh, when I can get this thing open and take a look, I'm fairly confident that's the issue. If that's not, the only other thing it could be is the ABS or the, uh, yeah, the uh, wheel speed sensor itself that connects right there with a 10 millimeter. Um, I've got to take that off and get it out of the way. We're going to have to remove this bolt here to release this upper arm. We'll take off the caliper and we'll remove the uh, hub. And then at that point, we can get access to the three bolts on the back side of this rear wheel. So I'm going to finish taking this out. This is a T, what was that? T30. And that just is a kind of locks down that uh, that rotor. This is a tight little sucker, but loose on this. This is where I need my uh, drill driver. So we'll uh, continue taking the rest of this off and be right back. So the this upper is a 21 millimeter that fits on both sides. So once we get that loose, it'll allow a little bit better access to this uh, caliper bolt. I think I can get in there with a. Let's see what is this? It's an 18 mil. See how it just hits you ahead of that. You could probably get it with a box end wrench, but we gotta take it out anyways, and I'm just gonna remove that and then give me a straight shot into that. So 21 for the uh, two on the top. So I will say that I did not have a 21 inch or 21 millimeter box end wrench, but I have a 13 16 and the 13 16 fits on there. So if you have a 13 16 and a standard, uh, it'll work just fine. So just so you know, when you uh, loosen this upper one, there's a, just a tiny bit of tension. This is really pretty loose, but once once you get that through, it will kind of spring back up and you know it, it may look like this is going to to fall down. I just have a, a jack stand here and another one back under there under the frame just to keep the car safe. But just so you know that this will pop up once you back this bolt out. And again, that's at 21, 21 millimeter that holds that. And the, uh, actually the nut was pretty rusted. So probably give that a clean up before we put it all back together. So, uh, next you're going to remove the, uh, the caliper bolts and uh, set that brake caliper off to the side. Okay, so I used a combination of a uh, swivel headed 3 8 a wobble type connection, and an 18 millimeter. And that allowed me to take those three bolts off. Pretty, uh, pretty uneventful. And then the uh, the cover that covers the back of that to uh, like the inspection the back of that uh, look what I see here this is that magnetic ring that flakes off these bearings so and you see it's sticking to that plate so definitely need to replace it so it was a good call on that using that uh, Oh, that uh, scanner to give me an idea of the wheel speed sensor, and so it was a an educated guess. And uh, I've got the uh, part, so got the three bolts off. We're gonna finish removing this, pulling this off here. So this tool, 
I picked up at Harbor Freight. I buy a lot of stuff at Harbor Freight just because it's inexpensive. But there was, I believe it may have been the Torque Test Channel. One of them did a review of the Harbor Freight Chief, and I believe it was the Snap-On. And they're the exact same, well, I should not say 100%, but they are almost a complete duplicate. This thing is very powerful. Um, first time I had a chance to use it. Um, these bearings are notorious for sticking to the aluminum housing that they're built in. So you got the steel against the aluminum, you got the dissimilar metals, they corrode against each other. These are awful to get out. There's some, some tricks. Um, I don't remember exactly. I think you could use a, a puller somehow, but there's no axle on this. So um, what I did is I used this and I went on the corner and I just kind of rocked it back and forth until it started rotating. And then once I got enough movement and rotating, it just popped right out. This thing, you just kind of, well, there you go. It fell right out. It, you know, obviously I already had that out before, but uh, you can see the corrosion, the buildup in that uh, aluminum and steel when they're set together. There's the, uh, you know, I initially tried to go from the back of the, the uh, bearing from underneath and it just, it wasn't budging. So I came out and kind of just rotated it. Maybe I gum that up a little bit. To take a file to that and clean that up um, scored it with a bit but I just rotated that until it broke loose finally and just came out so uh, with that out I'm going to clean all this up and uh, start the reassembly well worth its money I think it was like 150 bucks thereabouts I don't remember exactly but a lot cheaper than the three or four hundred dollar snap on one so it's been about uh, well, five to ten minutes of cleaning this thing up still got a little bit more to go uh, it's best to get rid of all of that that corrosion on there that uh, will just continue it's pretty smooth up top looks like I got a little bit here on this side and just a little on that side left to go. I'm just using a wire brush on a on a drill. Uh, maybe a flap disc would be better. Maybe a little more aggressive. Um, you know, whatever you feel comfortable using, just get that cleaned out as much as you can. All right, for the reassembly, um, make sure you get this cover on. Should be the correct way. What you want? There's a little little indentation right there so that allows any dust or dirt to fall out of the uh, back of it as this as it collects dirt so when this sets on there that's going to want to be oriented in that position so that it falls down of course this goes on the back side behind the bolts that go into the into the bearing itself but just make sure that that is got the proper orientation in the back when you go to get it installed So I was uh, looking for the torque specs, and from what I could find, the three hub bolts uh, here, here, and the one underneath should be at 118 foot-pounds. I found the two for the brake caliper bolts at 75 pounds. If uh, I still need to find this upper uh, torque setting, and um, maybe the speed or the ABS sensor uh, it probably doesn't need to be torqued it just needs to be snug it doesn't have anything other than to hold that uh, sensor in position so uh, I'm going to get these torqued to 118 get that caliper put back on uh, at 75 and I'll be right back after that's done so I ran into an issue where I was trying to get this upper bolt through um, ended up uh, lowering it down on the jack stands pulling the jack out and actually connected it right underneath the, or to push up right under the edge of that uh, top hat of that rotor. And that allowed that thing to come right back up into position and now I can get that bolt all the way through and get that reconnected. So uh, just a little 
tip when you're going to reconnect that. So torque specs are awful elusive. Uh, I did find a spec for 80 pounds for that one. And I will say that the three hub bolts, 118 pounds is way too much. I broke them off with this little 3 8 inch uh, long handle without much effort. Uh, at 118, I give it all I got with this tight room and I couldn't even get it to hit. Uh, I found another one that said 85. So um, they're all of 85. The two of them I definitely got over 85. The one is at 85. So I would say that if you're going to use a torque spec, use 85 for the hub bolts, 80 for this upper control arm bolt, and 75 was on the caliper brackets. That seemed reasonable. Uh, it wasn't excessive. Uh, so that should be all the torques for that. Um, I didn't really torque this because this is a captured nut. It just kind of holds the rotor. Uh, even if it backs out, it can't go anywhere. It gets trapped behind the wheel. So I just tighten that up. You don't want it too tight because it gets to be a real bear when you try to replace the rotor and that is really tight and seized in there. So just snug it up. Um, if you want to look up the torque specs, uh, go ahead. But I just don't feel it's that, that critical because it is a captured uh, captured bolt that isn't going to go anywhere. So uh, I'd say that this is pretty much complete as far as the mechanical. I'm going to put the wheel and tire back on, uh, pull the jack stands out, get the uh, uh, scanner put back on there, clear the codes, and run it through a drive cycle and make sure that the wheel speed is reporting properly. So I will uh, be back in a few minutes after I get that set up. So the EBCM So let's enter this Let's clear the fault codes So the ignition on, engine off Fire it back up. All right, everything is clear. Let's see if I can't find the uh, wheel speed indicator again. data stream there we go left rear wheel speed sensor that's the one that we just replaced should give us all right I'm gonna set this down and get my seat belt on here I'll hold this here and keep the camera pointed at it so I can drive and you can see real time what's going on here. So if you remember the last time this thing was dropping out every few minutes. run 
like a quarter mile. I'd say that was it. I'm gonna go here and turn around. I'm gonna stop this. I'm just gonna set the cruise control and make sure it stays steady. Alright, well, I would say that that has taken care of it. The codes are cleared, the bearing has been replaced. Um, I think I was quoted some time ago on a different vehicle around five to six hundred dollars uh, at the dealership for a wheel bearing replacement, uh, material and labor. Uh, I spent mm, roughly two, two and a half hours. $60 bearing, did it myself, um, and saved a substantial amount of money. This, if you don't have the proper tools, this can be a difficult uh, repair just because it's so difficult to get that bearing out of that housing. Uh, when they get corroded in there, it's, it's damn near impossible to get it out. Uh, had it not been for buying that... Uh, impact hammer I don't think I would have got that thing out at all and uh, it's uh, it would have uh, taken me a substantially longer amount of time to get it get it uh, removed and installed properly if I uh, hadn't had that that purchase so just know that not having something like that will increase the amount of time but you know if you're gonna spend five hundred dollars at the dealership I think you can justify a $150, $160 tool that will uh, make that job considerably easier. Uh, I know that because I replaced my wife's rear wheel bearing. Uh, actually, it was the same one about three years ago. And I spent two days. Uh, ended up buying an arbor press because I had to press the, the bearing out of, the, out of that knuckle. Uh, and then then found this tool uh, that seems to work a heck of a lot better. So uh, take that for what it's worth, but it's well worth your, your time if you want one of those tools to, to help you get it out. So I hope this helped every, anybody out. Uh, appreciate you watching. If you could, uh, throw a like and uh, subscribe if you'd like. I would certainly appreciate it, and uh, have a great day. Thanks again.